Okay, hi, it's uh, Ryan Gordon here for part three. Holy moly, we're still doing this. Okay, um, so last time we left off, if you were, if you remember, we had just, you know, flowing green background here and pause. Oh, that's really loud. And rewind. So like that, um, I'm going to turn that volume down a little tiny bit. So there's two things I want to try and get through today, and if this goes really long, then we'll just do the first one, do the next one next time. But let's go ahead and uh, start on this. So um, first things first, it doesn't take long as much as we love that song to really want to hear a different song. So let's go ahead and figure out how to make this a little more flexible so that we don't have to listen to just one song hard-coded to music.wave all the way through this. Um, in fact, let's not load one here at all. Um, let's see. Let's do this to get started here. Let's not load the wave file up front because we're going to load something while we go, which means we're not going to open this audio device yet. Just take all this stuff and move it down. Cue the audio there. All right, so we're going to take all that out. So basically, we're just going to get up and running. And the window's there. The renderer's there. We have our event loop. But nothing actually happens until we tell it to do something. So I'm going to go ahead and say right now that we do not have a file open dialog in SDL. It's just not an API that's in there right now. But we're going to cheat because there is a drag and drop API. So in SDL, we have an event called drop event. There it is, drop file. There you go. You can also drop text uh, for people doing that, I guess. So. And all it basically tells you is a file name here. So you can just say someone has just dropped a file onto this window. It's in standard, like, GUI drag and drop nonsense stuff. So let's go ahead and hook that up real quick here. So case SDL drop file. Putting this right into our event loop. This is just another SDL event. The same way that we check for the mouse button getting clicked and we check to see if they've asked to quit the program, you can also say, hey, has someone just dropped a file on this, uh, this window? Uh, so when that happens, let's get our local scope here so we can have a variable here. Actually, I guess we can just do this. Uh, when that happens, we're going to look for this file right here, drop event. It's just called drop. Okay. So in our event, it's called drop, and the file name is file. So now we're going to have our same loading stuff that we have now, except we're going to, instead of hard coding music.wave, we're going to use this file name right here, whatever it might be. And also, since we're now just going to be in the middle of the program, we absolutely positively do not want to call panic and abort. Um, let's just show a message box if this freaks out. Show simple typing. There we go. Instead of, just pan instead of panicking, let's just let them know that this thing went south for various reasons. And we have a window now, so we can do that. Just called a window. Okay, so that'll be attached to our window instead of a global thing. Couldn't load wave file, that's why. Good, yep, okay, so we'll just do that and then go on with our lives. Now, keep in mind, if we're going to be able to drop files on here at any time, then that means if a file's playing already, we need to get rid of the old one, which we have... Um, where are you? Where did we save that to? Q audio here, wave buff, that's where we saved it to. Okay, so wave buff and wavelen are gonna have to still be outside of this because we're gonna want to hold on to these. We'll put them up at the top so we have them for later. But as soon as we hit this, we're gonna want to get rid of the old one. So we're gonna say SDL free wave buff. And SDL free, if you pass it a null, it doesn't care. It's just a no op. So we don't have to make sure that wave buff is not null before we go in here. And just for completeness, we'll set wave length to zero, even though we're about to change this again. Uh, and actually, let's set wave buff to null too, just in case this fails, we'll know that it's null for certain at this point. So now we have that. Let's keep our wave spec out of here too. So we know the details of this file even after we leave this event loop. So, okay, so we have. We free the old one, we clear that stuff out, we try to load the new one from whatever file name we were given. If that fails, we say show a simple message box saying couldn't do it, in which case we'll just stop doing our thing. Um, and then we're just going to, oh, actually, this is a good point. So 
right now we're, we have the audio device open to exactly what this wave format is for whatever was playing currently. So let's, at that point, close the audio device, if it exists already. This is not what we're going to want to do long term, but let's just say if there is an audio device already, let's close it out. Audio device. SDL close audio device. Get rid of the one that was already there. And we'll make that null just so that we know it's definitely we're having problems here if this choked. So okay, uh, let me try to load the wave. Cool. Um, also, closing this audio device will free out the queue. You don't have to anything you've queued up. You don't have to clear it ahead of time. That will take care of freeing all that for you. Okay, so clean up our old stuff. We're loading the wave the the new wave file that's just been dropped on us. We're gonna come back to this later. This is gonna be magic for some other time. And then we open the audio device, even if we've just closed it up here, we're going to open it again with whatever the new WAV file wants. In case it's different, we'll have the audio, audio device in a different format. Um, this is not ideal, but this is definitely a simple, nice way to make this work. Uh, if this fails, then we are, again, not going to panic and abort. We're just going to show a message box and give up. Couldn't open audio device, the reason why in the window, and get rid of that panic. Um, if that fails, let's just be naughty about this and free our WAV file here. So, you know, having a nice clean way to clean that up. All right, and then assuming this has all worked, we'll queue up the new audio. So it's it loads. So again, we clean up what we might have been playing in this part. Then we load a new file. If that works, we open the audio device so that it's ready to play exactly in the format of that audio file. And if that works, we dump the entire WAV file to the audio device so it'll play it as, as it needs to without our intervention. So that's all there is to that. And then, of course, break. So that, because remember, we are in a case statement here. So you want to have a break at the end so you don't just fall through to something else back to this too, but we'll stick it over here so it's in, no, not stick it out like a sore thumb. I am jealous of people with text editors that can indent multiple block, uh, multiple lines at a time. But this gives me a chance to stop and think about what I'm doing, so I like that. All right, so there's one more thing we need to do before we do anything else. And this is, uh, the drop file event is a unique event within STL. Drop event, because this magic text, uh, text right here, which should be freed with SDL free. Now, all events, as you've seen in here, are one big C union, which is to say that everything you need for the event fits in this thing, and they mush them all together so they use the same space. But there is there is no allocation in it for the most part. It's just, here's the data, and when it's done, you just let it drift off into space because you just don't need those bits anymore. But since um, uh, drag and drop events might have any length file name, we had to have a dynamic string in there. So it, whenever STL sends one of these, it allocates a string, you deal with the event, and then you free it. Now, if your program is not prepared to deal with drop events, you don't want to be leaking memory. So STL, by default, will not send you these events. You have to enable them. If I can find, where are you? Uh, I forget the name of this thing. Come here, where are you? Blah, blah, blah. Pull event. Now, see, now I'm just reading the API manual while you're all sitting here watching me. That's kind of embarrassing. Event state. That's the one I was looking for. Okay, so you have to tell SDL, hey, I know that I have to free these drag and drop events every time they come through the queue or it's going to leak memory. So it is safe to send them to me, which is to say we're going to send a thing to this saying... We're going to put something at startup here right after we initialize. Let's do it after we create the window, just in case. We're going to say, steal event state. Uh, da, 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 da. It? SDL drop file. Well, and the state is SDL enable, which just tells SDL this event that is disabled by default. Look at that, I left a comment. So when we look at that later, we know why it's there. There's one exception to drop file, which is if you have an operating system that can launch an app by dropping an icon onto it, like you 
launch Microsoft Word by dropping a Word document file onto the apps icon, which you can do on some operating systems. Uh, in that case, SDL, if it's a drop event, it got that launched the program, it will send a drop event whether you have them enabled or not, because obviously it needs to know to send that before your main line is run. So you will not have a chance to enable them. And the thought there is that if you are not handling them, then we're going to leak a couple of bytes for a single string. Uh, and that's just life uh, if, you were not, if your app was not prepared to handle it. But other than that, it won't send any future drop events until you enable it. Okay, so this drop file came through here. We're done with that. So now, after we've opened everything, before we quit out of this event handler, we need to SDL free e drop file. So that string gets freed. Okay, that's good to go. So, again, let's see. We clean up any audio device that was there. We load a WAV file. If it works, we open the audio device for it, we feed it the data, we clean up after ourselves, and then we should be ready to play a new thing. Oh, with one exception. We have not paused or unpaused the thing. I guess, you know what, let's just, if it was already playing, let's keep it playing. So let's just say SDL pause audio device, audio device paused. Because remember, we toggle, we toggle this variable every time they click the button, right? So if it was already playing, let's just keep it playing with the new file. In fact, let's do this up here. So as soon as we have audio, we start it playing. Okay, good. Uh, but if they weren't playing, we'll just leave it paused. And so the state stays sane, and that's good. Now there's something else we need to check up here, is when we're trying to do this, we don't want to use the audio device at all, we don't want to pause it or rewind it or anything if the audio device doesn't exist because we tried to open something and it failed, or we haven't tried to open anything yet. So let's say if audio device, and just wrap this whole thing for now, although I'm su suspicious that we might want to just check that in each individual case, although I have a feeling all this code's going away pretty soon, but no, let's do it. Why not? I'm feeling saucy. Let's. Let's put this back the way it was and check these in the right places, even though it's two checks right next to each other. So if you're in there, don't touch the audio device if we haven't opened it and have something successfully loaded to it. We will let you toggle pausing, though, even if the audio device doesn't have, isn't up and running at the moment. We'll still let that button work. Okay, good. So now, in theory, let's see, where are we at? Did we free the wave buffer? I don't think we did. Yes, well, maybe we did, but with the wrong function. Okay, SDL free wave is what we want. Free wave. Which is just a wrapper over SDL free in, in, in implementation, but we don't actually, you're not actually supposed to know that when you're writing this, so. Okay, so that's that. We have wave buffer, that's cool. Um, somebody complained to me the other day that uh, we should have we should clean up our windows and stuff here, so let's do that. Even though STL quit will clean up them up for you. So just while we're here, destroy window, window, and let's destroy the renderer too. Just for full and proper complete cleanup, just to be good people. There we go. Cool. Um, and also what I'm thinking about, I was lying awake in bed last night and I was thinking, this message box right here should, uh, when you panic at startup, should attach itself to the window if it exists. If the window doesn't exist, it'll be null and it'll do the right thing anyway, but you might as well attach it to it if you got the window up and then the renderer failed or something like that. So, okay, cool. All right, so theoretically, yeah. Okay, let's, let's run it and see what it does. Anything? Oop, oh, hey, <laughs> compile error. I love those, those are my favorite. Uh, okay, destroy renderer. There's an ER on the end of that, so. Renderer like that, and the other thing was the audio device. This shouldn't be null. That should just be zero. That would have worked anyway because it becomes zero, but just for, you know, keeping things clear and the compiler happy, the audio device is not a pointer. So, okay, we're good. Let's see if this works. Okay. Nothing's playing because we don't have anything set to play uh, because by default we're not playing anything now. So let's go and find some stuff. Blatant advertisement for a nice person who put their music on Bandcamp in Creative Commons 4 format. This is Kevin Hartnell's music. I paid for this, but 
Um, he has this nice album up here you can listen to for free. And there's his uh, uh, Creative Commons uh, stuff. If you want to go to kevinhartnell.com, that's where I got this from. Um, you're welcome. There we go. Okay, so that that's that. But I just have... Also, the nice thing about Bandcamp is it would give these to me in WAV file format, so I didn't have to convert them. So, um, so XDG open. Let's see if this will work. Kevin Hartnell. Did I do this all right? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, let's try Razor Strap. That sounds pretty good. So let's get our window here. There we go. Let's get just drag this onto the window and see if it works. You see, you got a little plus there. It recognizes we should be able to drop onto this. And now I'm still paused. Remember, so I'm going to click this. And there's my music. And I can rewind it. How about um, cells? Let's drop this song called Cells on there. There you go. Much more like a media player already. That's very dramatic. I like that. How about this song? Very cool. Okay, good. That wasn't too bad. That was only 15 minutes to get us that now we no longer have to listen to that one hard-coded file anymore so that's pretty good we're gonna call that progress making me happy here okay uh, the other thing I wanted to do and I don't know if we can do this in 15 minutes maybe we should just stop here I don't know you know what yeah let's just stop here because 16 minutes I think is probably enough for one video we're trying to keep these things bite sized right uh, next time we're gonna hook up a volume control to this thing um, a little slider thing we can do to make it sound quieter instead of having to you know pray that you have a system button that'll do it for you alright um, I think that's good for today so uh, just to recap real quick we didn't do that much all we did was hook up an ability to drag files onto this window and play them and swap out the file and we're no longer stuck with just one hard-coded thing and it wasn't that much code to do it we were being kind of fancy here and the whole thing is I don't know let's see we'll call that it's about 40 lines of code most of them we had already written such like this if zero and stuff like that. So we didn't actually add very much code. We tweaked a little, we add some cleanup stuff to reset things. And, you know, that one line to enable the event state. So overall, pretty simple to get drag and drop up and running in an SDL app. So, okay, I think that's pretty good. Let's stop there for the day. Yeah, and we'll do this. We'll do the next thing tomorrow. Um, Okay, I hope you're all enjoying this. I'm, I'm, I know the last video was 40 minutes long. This one is, uh, we're at 17 and a half right now because I'm still rambling, but I like that we're doing these little bite-sized things. I like that we're making progress that you can see every time. So um, stick with me. We're going to keep adding features to this, and we're going to uh, start making it look more and more like a real media player as we go along. So, Okay, thank you very much. I will see you next time, I hope. Bye.